How much energy can I save if I install solar on my home? So you've got yourself a nasty power bill and you've come to the realization that it just isn't going down. It doesn't matter what government says about energy rebates, yada, yada, yada. The fact is, is that energy is still increasing and it is hurting Australians more than ever. If you're one of these people with ever rising power bills and you want to know what solar is going to save you, then here it is. There are a few questions to ask before speaking to a consultant and installing solar on your home. And there are a few variables you want to take into consideration as well. One of those is how much money do you currently spend on energy? You may not need to overinvest and go over the top when you're buying a solar system. And unfortunately, in the solar industry, a lot of solar consultants are paid commissions on the kilowatts that they sell you. You'll want to sense check this for yourself, but I've got some great recommendations when thinking about what solar system to put on your home. The next thing you'll want to take into consideration is how much roof space do you actually have available? There's no point wanting to put a 30 kilowatt system on your roof if you can only fit 15. There is certainly a point of installing the 15, but you'll need to adjust your expectations in how much the solar system is going to save you. The next thing to take into consideration is your family's energy profile. Are you the sort of family that uses most of their energy at nighttime or do you use a lot of energy during the day? Are you a rural property with pumps running during the day or are you a business that only operates in nighttime hours? This will make a really big difference to your return on investment and how much solar you should actually install. And one of the last things to take into consideration is if you're going to take advantage of battery storage and virtual power plants today in Australia. My tip for you is that battery storage right now in Australia, coupled with a great virtual power plant such as Amber's Energy Plans, is the equivalent of the 60 cent feed-in tariff way back in 2012. You can watch some other videos of us speaking with Amber and teaching you how to supercharge your returns using virtual power plants. Now that I've covered off some of the big considerations and variables when looking for a solar system, here are some tangible things that you can actually take away as you do your your research on a solar system. Cheap solar is going to pay itself off in around two to two and a half years, but it's not necessarily built to stand the test of time. If you get yourself a quality solar system, like Enphase microinverters, for example, you'll find that your return on investment is usually around the four year mark. Now, how can I give you a return on investment when I don't even know what your power bills are? Well, it's quite simple. If your return on investment increases from four years to five or six, there's something usually wrong with the equation. Maybe the system isn't sized properly or the companies may be charging you a little too much or a little less from where you need to be. With a high quality solar system, you can expect to pay about $1,200 per watt on average for solar. And for the cheaper stuff, you can sometimes get it as cheap as about $700 per watt. But solar is the case of you get what you pay for. And if you want a hassle-free installation with great quality products that are gonna stand the test of time, then you don't necessarily wanna be doing the cheapest system, although it pays itself off the quickest. If you're adding battery storage into the mix and you're looking at a DC coupled battery system like the Tesla Powerwall 3 or SIG Energy's new side gen store product, then the return on investment will increase by around a year or two. So if you have solar and battery on your home with a payback period of six years and you've got your power bill to almost zero. That's a really, really good equation. That's a benchmark that you should take away. A little pro tip for you when installing solar on your home. Solar panels logically go on the hottest roofs of your home, and it's not because solar panels like heat, it's because they like sun and the sun makes the roof hot. If you live in a house where you open the door in summer and it just smacks you in the face with heat, solar panels are going to have another really big advantage for you that you probably have never thought about. Solar panels add a whole layer of thermal protection to your home. You see, what you've done is you've just layered glass across the top of your actual roof material. So you've got glass solar panels with silicon wafer cells, then you've got a 60 to 70 mil air gap before your roofing material. The sun used to heat your roofing material and completely heat up your roof space, which is where most of the heat comes through in your home. By installing solar panels on all your hottest roofs, you've now kept so much of the heat out of your home. And what you'll probably find is you actually need to run your air conditioning even less in summer after installing solar. That's a little pro tip for you. So if you have roofs that you know get hot, fill them with solar panels. That's my best advice.